Hey, what's going on everybody? Two London Read Filmmaker here, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today I want to talk about mist filters. What are they? And do you need one? Well, the TLDR here is it takes your nice, super sharp lens and it's going to make it less sharp by blooming the highlights a little bit. And there are various different strengths that you can purchase. So depending on what it is you need, you can get the correct strength for your ideal look. In terms of do you need one, in my opinion, the TLDR here is if you're a narrative filmmaker, wedding, documentary, you should probably have either one or two different strengths so you can choose which one is going to fit best for your scene. For YouTubers, completely optional, really depends on your setup and what kind of mood you're going for. And last but not least, if you're doing like corporate events in terms of just doing interviews, probably don't necessarily need it. That's not a look they're going for. but. If you want to, you can probably add a lower strength one so that the mist effect isn't too strong. And with all that out of the way, let's go through some test results. Now, I don't have all the mist filters out there. I just have from two different brands. So just know this is not the most exhaustive review out there. So I have a Tiffin Black Pro Mist one quarter, and then I have the original Freewell Versatile Filter Kit. Now, I noticed that my kit seems very, very strong in terms of the mist. And when I looked at the website, Basically, the stuff that's coming out now is a one quarter mist, but I want to say mine is closer to like a one stop to a one and a half stop. It's very, very strong. Talked to Freewell about it, and they graciously sent me out the glow mist one eight and one quarter to complete the set so I can give you guys a much better idea of what strength you need. So thank you, Freewell. Without further ado, let's go to the tests. The first test is just me sitting out and about with light everywhere around me. Now, as you can see, when we go through each filter, the stronger ones will start to introduce a mist onto the underside of this shelter. The second test, I wanted to see how does the mist soften the details on my skin when there is no bright light sources in this actual shot. Now immediately once you put on the mist filter, my slight freckles actually do soften up and my skin starts to glow a little bit. Here are some zoomed in side by side comparisons for you as well to kind of see the difference between each strength of mist filter. Next up is the practical light tests, and you can basically look at this as if you are shooting in a living room in the evening and you have some lamps around in the scene. As you can see, the mist filter creates this bloom around the LED tube, giving it more of an atmospheric look in my opinion. Next, I want to check the flare characteristics of each filter, as by adding more glass in front of your lens generally causes more flares to happen. Now the bare lens handles the flare quite well because the coating on it does a nice job keeping it nice and ghostly. The mist filters on the other hand make the flare more prominent. All except for the Freewell Versatile Filter Kit which takes away the flare altogether. I also wanted to check for color shifts between each filter, and I'm happy to report that most of the filters do not cause any shift whatsoever, except for the Freewell Versatile Filter Kit. In my original review, I found that it had a huge warm shift. Now the last test I did was to shoot something with completely no motivation whatsoever on my part. And as you can see, the mist doesn't really do anything at the lower power level until you get to the higher power mist filters, which essentially just flattens out the overall image. So what's the bottom line here? The bottom line is the mist filter is going to take away that harsh, sharp edge that most of these lenses have today. And in my opinion, it's a much more pleasing look and it gives you something that looks technically more filmic because back then the lenses weren't as clinically sharp. They were sharp, but the way they handled the highlights was much different than the way modern lenses handle it today. And in my opinion, it gives the video that we shoot digitally today a little bit more texture. And of course, depending on what kind of setup you're doing, especially for narrative films, if you have very, very contrasty scenes where it's just one light, harsh light coming from the top and maybe a couple practicals on the sides, having that aura is going to give the room more texture and more atmosphere versus if you just shoot with a modern lens, everything is going to look too sharp. 
Now, of course, depending on what type of film you're going for, maybe the atmosphere is not needed. So that is something that you have to think about. But otherwise, if you're thinking about golden hour shots or places of high key where there's strong light sources, having this mist filter is going to give that nice dream look, depending on how strong of a filter you get. And with that, you can achieve a much more interesting cinematic shot depending on your story. And like I said in the beginning, for YouTubers, just really depends on what your setup is. Obviously, I have no practicals in the back, so a mist filter in this setup is really not going to do much. But in the future, when I actually move my studio to a completely much larger room and have practicals, you bet that I'm probably going to put a, some sort of mist filter, probably a 1.8 or a one quarter, to give me a little bit more atmosphere in my shot. And of course, if you are thinking about corporate stuff, again, this is going to depend on you, but all the corporate stuff I've shot, they could care less if I put a mist filter on there because they that's not what they're looking for. A lot of the stuff that I've done is more internal, but if you are doing more corporate commercial stuff, then again, that you're kind of doing it as narrative film at that point. There's a, diff, there's a reason why you would use a mist filter depending on your story. And hey, that is it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I do have some affiliate links down below. Again, it costs nothing extra to you, but it does help support the channel should you use it. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.